Hi, I am Nicholas from ASTAR Singapore, and today I will present Chris the system that we developed for programming free object and task teaching. In the use case I will demonstrate today, Chris will assist in the assembly process of a gearbox mechanism. I have all the components of the gearbox here. And right in front of me, the interface that we design through which that I will use to interact with Chris. First thing I will do is connect to Chris. Hi, I am Chris, the collaborative human robot intelligence system. Now that Chris is ready, let me explain you what he can do. We have already taught a few objects to the system, and I will demonstrate to you how it performs right now. Through the interface, I can select the object detector that we train, launch it, and we will see how it performs. I can give a few objects to Chris. For instance, if I give him this small part, it will identify it as the hub cover, this one transfer shaft, and a casing bolt. However, if I place this one, since I haven't taught it to the system, it is labeled as unknown, even if I change its orientation. In order to teach this new object to Chris, I will trigger our object teaching routine. First thing I need to do is give this object a name. We call it input shaft. Next, I place it in a decent view for Chris and start the process. Please give me a moment. I start to view the object. Chris will first have a view at this object, observe it to add it to the database. It will take different, different views of the object and for each one of them, compute what we call the goodness of view. This information will be used to determine where to go next to get more information on the object. This is an algorithm that we developed and that we call canonical view selection. You can also see on the interface a black and white window, which is the result of a depth segmentation. We use this to automatically generate annotations to train our object detector and also extract a color mask of the object to perform data augmentation. Thanks to this, there is no human intervention for the training of the object detector. Eventually, the system retains the most informative views for training. Here, we have selected in the system three views to be retained. The process is fully autonomous. It might take a few more seconds and then we'll be ready to go. In the meantime, I can either perform a different task or even go for a break. Perfect. The system is done. We can see on the interface which views have been selected for training. And once, that this is, once this is completed, I can go back to the object detection tab, update the list of detectors, and choose the latest one. Let's test the performances. As you can see, the system now identifies this object as input shaft, no matter how I place it. And it also doesn't forget the previous knowledge, as we can also identify all the other components. Now that we know how to recognize different objects, I will teach Chris how to interact with it. 
For this, I will take one of the first steps of the gearbox assembly process, which is inserting this shaft into one of the holes of the casing. To do so, we have developed an algorithm that enables us to only show Chris by visual demonstration how to perform the task. In the interface, I have a task teaching option to which I can give a name. So the task I want to teach is insert input shaft into casing. And the only thing I have to do is make sure Chris can properly see the objects and start the teaching. I am ready. Please teach me the task. On the interface, we can see that I have the option to insert the shaft in different holes. For instance, I can choose hole number three. and stop the registration process. We can now see on the right side of the interface that Chris understood the proper structure of the task. We find the main steps such as pick up the input shaft, move it to the casing hole and I'm sorry, moving to the casing, move it to the casing in which hole and the last step which is put down the input shaft for insertion. On the bottom left, we can also see that the correct objects are, ident are identified and the whole position also. I can confirm this task, which is now added to the system. Now that Chris knows this structure, I want the system to reproduce it. So I move on to our task execution tab, where I can update the list of tasks available. Here I have my new task like I, that I load. And Chris will rely on different sensors to perform the new task. Let me show you. Here we have a global camera, which, is, which provides both color and depth information. We will use it to estimate the position of all the objects in the working area for Chris. This could have some imperfections. So we also use a, another RGBD camera to better estimate each object position for grasping, insertion, or other actions. These sensors could also have some imperfections, which is why we chose to equip Chris with another sensor, which is a tactile sensor that we can see here. As I touch it, you can see how um, the system understands the information. We will use this information during the grasping to estimate if there is any offset. If so, Chris will be able to compensate for it during the execution. Let's go back to the interface now. My task is loaded. I just have to click on start task execution and Chris will perform the task autonomously. I give this shaft to Chris. I place my casing in position for Chris and we're ready to go. I start to execute the task now. You can pay attention to the tactile information window as the shaft is being grasped. Here we can confirm the grasping. Also understand that there is a bit of an offset, but we'll compensate for it later on. Chris is now moving above the casing. It now identifies which hole the insertion has to be done into and will perform the last step. Let's give Chris some more time to complete everything. Perfect. We can also use Chris for collaborative tasks. 
a perfect example of collaboration, a perfect use case for collaboration is inserting these three shafts, which are the core of the mechanism. I cannot do it alone because I only have two hands, and inserting these shafts requires simultaneous um, action on these three. Chris cannot do it either because it only has one gripper, and doing it sim uh, sequentially would not work either. The last option would be to collaborate. Chris already knows how to handle this part, so I will leave it to him, and I will take care of these. How will I specify, Chris, that I want to collaborate with it? This will be done through the interface. I will apply the template of insertion to the input shaft. Oh, typo here. Direct Chris to place it in the casing at the hole number three. And then I can add this to my task. We can see here that the structure is, under, is uh, available, but I, as I said, I need to instruct Chris to be collaborative, to collaborate with me for the insertion. For this, we design a collaborative mode that I just activated here, and using it, I will be able to, to tell Chris to wait for my input here before inserting the shaft. Activating this mode also enables the compliant mode of Chris for safer and better insertion. I can also add instructions for the user, such as handle the two shafts. I'm sorry, the two other shafts, for instance, and edit my task. Now Chris has the instruction to wait for my input and can also provide um, instructions to any user. Last step will be to name this task. I will name it collaborative shaft insertion. I can then add this to the system and we are ready to go. I move on again, I move back to the task execution tab update my list of tasks. Here we have the new, the two new tasks. I will choose the collaborative one and start the execution. So this shaft, as I said, I will leave Chris to handle. I can place the casing where it's convenient for me. I start to execute the task now. And get ready. I'm in the position, waiting for your signal. So as Chris just said, it's waiting for my input. Before anything, I can check that the robot is in compliant mode. That will help me for the insertion. And I will next trigger the insertion by pulling Chris down to signal him that I want to start. Let me do it. Okay, let's start the collaborative work. Perfect. We both move away. And I can now verify that the system is complete. Task is completed. Yeah. So basically, this is our solution for programming free object and task teaching. Thank you.